Hello my real lovelies, welcome back to the channel and as always welcome to my home. We are in the kitchen again uh, and I'm, I'm wearing pearls today uh, with the Queen Victoria uh, Sapphire Coronet which I thought uh, would go really really nicely. Right, today I wasn't going to make a video but I am because we have another sort of breaking story. Well it broke last night but I'm talking about it today. Um, so it is, of course, about our beloved Catherine. Now, she has found herself and William at the centre of conspiracy and scandal like no time before. I mean, I think ever since Catherine married into the family, even before then, ever since she sort of began dating Prince William, um, there has not been as much scandal and press, everything popping off about them. We are almost kind of back in the kind of, you know, mid 90s or, you know, early to mid 90s where the press was kind of, you know, turning people, uh, Diana in particular, into this kind of, uh, you know, media figure. And largely, um, they have left William and Catherine alone to kind of get on with life, get on with the job in hand. But the management, and I think it has in part become from the palace itself, the management of the whole abdominal surgery situation and the Mother's Day photo has just sent things absolutely stratospheric. But this comes from the time of when she actually went in to surgery and there has been a security breach. Now, Kensington Palace has been informed, I will say that straight away from the top of this video, Kensington Palace was in informed pretty much immediately. Um, so this comes from the hospital where she was being treated in London and um, a member of staff tried to access her private medical records, I imagine on the computer systems, without the relevant permission. So obviously when you work in a hospital, you do sometimes, um, as a medical practitioner, need to access your patient's medical information. However, there are confidentiality rules, laws, rules uh, in place, procedures, where only people who need to access that information are allowed to access it. Otherwise, it becomes a security breach. And that is what has happened. So we don't know whether or not it was, you know, paper records or digital. I'm imagining it was digital. And we don't know who. So we don't know what level of staff member it was. Was it another doctor? Was it a nurse? Was it, you know, a, a support staff or a cleaner or somebody uh, who, who just happened to have access to that information? So has there actually been um, a, a dropping or uh, a misuse of the protocol? You know, for example, you're, you're supposed to, you know, lock your computers after you leave the desk, when you go to the toilet or that kind of thing. So has procedure been followed? The, an investigation is going on uh, internally. Uh, so this is, so it says, I've got the article in front of me so that I don't sort of miss any uh, important elements to this, but bosses of the London clinic uh, where Catherine underwent her planned abdominal surgery in January have launched an investigation after it was acclaimed, claimed at least, this is the bit, at least one member of staff tried to access the Royal's notes. Uh, one insider at the hospital said of the alleged breach, this is a major security breach and incredibly damaging for the hospital given its unblemished reputation for treating members of the royal family. And, you know, medical information of the royal family has, you know, been guarded and protected fiercely over, over the years. We still don't know the official, for example, um, illnesses or complaints that Her Late Majesty had. We only found out about some of the late Queen Mother's um, operations when her official biography came out following her passing. Um, and we are in very new territory with regards to royals releasing information about their health. For example, King Charles releasing everything um, that he is going through now. Catherine, however, has chosen to remain as private as possible for as long as possible. 
And I don't think, well, I know, I think she will talk about whatever it is, uh, whatever the actual uh, abdominal surgery was for, in due course. But at the moment, she's remaining tight-lipped while she is undergoing that recovery or going through the recovery process. Um, remember, we have had lots of leaks and conspiracies maybe coming from, well, I say leak. We've had conspiracies coming out of foreign media, for example, the Spanish media, who said very early on that Catherine um, was, for example, put in some kind of an induced coma, um, pro probably shortly after the surgery. Now, this is <sighs> speculation at the moment, but we don't, well, I think this um, breach happened while she was in hospital. So did the Spanish media get that information from this breach? We know that um, they were, whoever it was that was involved attempted to access, did they fully access? What did they then do? Were they being paid, for example, by the press to access the information? Were the press literally kind of targeting staff as they were coming in and out of the hospital or finding out who they were from LinkedIn or from social media and then offering them money to get information to pass on to foreign media. Is that how the Spanish media found out? We don't know. Or it could just be completely made up. But we do know that there has been a breach. So senior hospital bosses contacted Kensington Palace immediately after the incident was brought to their attention and assured the palace there would be a full investigation. The whole medical staff have been left utterly shocked and distraught over the allegations and were very hurt that a trusted colleague, so it is kind of hinting at one, colleague, could have allegedly been responsible for such a breach of trust and ethics. Um, Catherine is said to be aware of the incident while a spokesperson for Kensington Palace said this is a matter for the London Clinic. So no great detail coming out of Kensington Palace regarding what they think. But it is a criminal offence for staff in any National Health Service or private healthcare setting to access medical records of a patient without the consent of the medical provider's data controller. An Information Commissioner's Office, the ICO, spokesperson said, we can confirm that we have received a breach report and are assessing the information provided. The police uh, have said uh, that it was unable to comment without knowing if the clinic had reported the incident to the force. So maybe they have, maybe they haven't. Uh, and the London Clinic has refused to speak to mainstream media as it firmly believes that all of our patients, no matter their status, deserve total privacy and confidentiality regarding their medical information. So, um, yeah, it, it's not helping with the speculation. All of these stories coming out most certainly are not doing anything um, to help quell or to kind of quash or calm down the social media storm. Even now, we still have people on social media claiming... Uh, that the video taken by uh, from the car park in the farm shop of William and Catherine of uh, body doubles. Um, now, like I say, I said in yes yesterday's video, I didn't believe that they are body doubles. I think it really was William and Catherine. But there was one thought that did cross my mind. Uh, there have at times uh, been artists who have used the medium of photography and they have used body doubles to kind of mimic uh, William and Catherine and the late Queen. Um, and they've, used, they've come up with some pretty, you know, convincing spoof uh, photographs. Uh, and, you know, the one thought that has crossed my mind is, were the, the people walking set up as a spoof for a photo shoot? I'm just saying, that, that is just one thing that potentially it could be, but I don't think so. I think it was William and Catherine, um, and I think they were just going about their daily life, uh, and for Catherine, her daily life in recovery, 
But I do think that Catherine wanted to be seen. I think she, you know, she was makeup free, hair off her face, no hat. I think she most definitely wanted the media to see her. Um, and of course that did work, but did it quell any of the media storm? Absolutely not. Uh, anyway, it is serious when there has been a data breach. I fully support the investigation and if there is any wrongdoing found, then I hope that, you know, the full procedures uh, are followed to the letter of the law. And if the police need to get involved, then perhaps they should get involved. Also, other royal photographs, well, people have been going back and looking at the metadata. I mean, who'd even heard of metadata until now? Anyway, the Catherine Mother's Day photo sparked uh, so much worldwide interest. Uh, and of course, people looked in even closer at the metadata. So the metadata is the uh, information attached to the photo. For example, when a photo is edited um, using a photo editing software, there's like a record of it kept and stored in its data. So people have been looking, analysing the raw data, and they've not just been doing this for the Mother's Day photo, they've been going back and looking, for example, at photos of uh, Her Late Majesty with her grandchildren, um, I think a Prince Archie's christening photo, and they have found evidence of, you know, Photoshop or photo editing involved with all of them. One of the things I will say is, I'm not bothered about, you know, a, a photographer coming, whether it's William and Catherine or whether, or whether it's a paid for photographer going in in post-production and, you know, maybe editing out a blemish or, you know, someone's got, got, got a spot. Well, you yeah, know, OK, fine, you know, edit out the spot uh, or, for example, fiddling with the lighting, making sure that people can be seen, raising the contrast, whatever it might be. That, to me, is minimal retouching. What we are talking about here is photograph manipulation, almost like the same kind of thing that I do with when I create a thumbnail. I will take an element of one photo or another and put it together to make, you know, basically a fabricated image, which is fine for the setting of thumbnails or whatever. But when you are looking at basically a historical record, a photo of the royal family, you kind of really don't want what I would call a Frankenstein photo, where you take one bit from here, one bit from there, and splice it all together, and then get an image. It is still a creative artwork, but it is not a real image in the sense of, you know, it doesn't capture a moment in time. And I think when it comes to photography, that's the one thing that is great about photography it captures a moment in time that is real. You know, if you want manipulation, then, you know, use AI or, you know, go back to having paintings done where you can, you know, make, you know, a fantastical um, made up scene of whatever you want. But a photograph, I feel, should be, you know, as true and accurate as it most possibly can be. So, I think what people are kind of against is the kind of splicing together of images. But now people are going back and looking at a lot of these images and finding elements of potential splicing together where fabrics don't match or patterns of clothes don't match or... Yeah, people are really digging deep. And it's making Buckingham Palace, Kensington Palace seem like a non-trusted source. So I think they need to get back to being a trusted source. And one of the ideas that I put out a few videos ago was I think they need to come together and come up with a new social media policy for photographs. And that should be that they will only ever do minimal retouching, lighting, blemishes, that kind of thing. But I think they need to come out and say categorically that they will not use Frankenstein photos where everything is kind of spliced together. That is just not on. And in a world where no one really knows what's true and what is not, um, you know, having a trusted source is incredibly valuable. Right, I'm gonna leave it there for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any thoughts or comments, please leave it in the, in the uh, comment box below. Uh, and I will see you next time. So from me to you all, and goodbye.